AS physics. Look for A levels physics. It is divided into two parts. One is AS and the other one is A2. AS is having three units, unit one, unit two, and unit three. Where for A2, you have uh, unit four, unit five, and unit six. So for AS, unit one, the code for this uh, unit one, WPH11. And when you're doing AS physics, the code is XPH11. So for unit one, the code is uh, WPH11. And what it include the topics which are pres uh, there in this unit one, it include the motion and graphs. It include momentum. Momentum is actually there as a part of motion and graph, but separately I'm mentioning momentum. Moment. The turning effect. Include work energy power. and fluids and the last part is materials these are the topic which you will find in unit one the topics which will cover unit two the code is w p h one two and the topics which will cover this waves, DC electricity, light. So these are the topics which will cover unit two. And for unit three, which is WPH13, it is alternate to practical. So the same way you already have an idea how ATP paper exam paper is there. So if some experiment planning is there, you have to complete some time the circuits mentioning the reading in the table. That is alternate to practical ATP. So let's start the first unit, unit one. The first one, the basic uh, quantities.
So basic or the fundamental quantities, there are seven fundamental or basic quantities which are length, mass, time, temperature or absolute thermodynamic temperature, current, electrical current, light intensity or an amount of substance. So these are the fundamental quantities and the units of these quantities are known as fundamental unit or basic unit or base units. So for length, it is meter. For mass, it is just kilogram. For time, it is second. For temperature, it is Kelvin. Amount of substance is impure. Um, sorry, by mistake. Current is impure. Amount of substance is uh, mole. And light intensity is candela. I was reading the amount of substance. That's why I just said amount of substance is current. But SI unit of length is meter. Mass is kilogram. Time is second, temperature is Kelvin, current is ampere, amount of substance is mole, and light intensity is candela. Instead of uh, writing this full, for meter we use small m, for kilogram we use kg, for second we use small s, for Kelvin we'll use capital K, for ampere we use capital A, for amount of substance mol and light intensity candela CD. A quantity other than this is known as a derived quantity or the units are known as a derived unit. So quantities other than these seven. Are known as derived quantities. And their units are known as derived units. So example, if I write pressure, that's a derived quantity. If I write force, that's a derived quantity. If I write density, that's a drive quantity. If I write area, that is also a drive because it's a product of length into width. It's not a basic. And their units are known as drive unit. Like example, pressure is Pascal. So Pascal is a drive unit. Force is Newton. It's a drive unit. Density is kilogram per meter cube. It's a derived unit area is meter square so it is a derived unit is it clear till now is it clear yes So a simple question, normally they ask, express the following quantities as base units. 
so you want to express the following quantities as base units and what are the base units as we know the base units it's mass kilogram second kelvin ampere mole and candela these are the base unit so how we can express like example the first one if i say express force in into base unit like what is a uh, represent its un its unit is newton but in terms of base unit means using a fundamental or the basic units so first to do this you should write a formula so what is a formula for force F is equals to m a. Very commonly, you use this formula: force is equals to mass multiplied by acceleration. So, what is mass? Mass is kg. And what is acceleration? Acceleration is meter per second square. The unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So, when I solve this, it will be kilogram meter divided by second square, or when we represent in terms of base unit normally we use all in numerator so if second square move to numerator it will be kilogram meter second raised to power minus 2 that's a base unit so basically when we say newton actually newton in terms of base unit is equals to kilogram meter second raised to power minus 2 same way if we have pressure so pressure is what pressure is force acting on unit area so the formula to calculate a pressure p is equals to f divided by a f is a force the unit is newton a is area meter square but what is newton newton itself is kilogram meter per second square so in place of newton in term, because we want to represent all of them in base unit so newton is kilogram meter second minus 2 and this meter square is there so this m will cancel with this square so it will be kilogram second minus 2 divided by meter but i told you all we represent in numerator so if i meter raised to power 1 i move to up like new in a numerator so it will become kilogram meter minus 1 second minus 2 is it clear representing this as a base unit same way if i say work done so represent work done actually it is joules the as the unit drive unit is joule but what are the other units so work done what is work done we know work done is equals to force multiplied by distance the unit of the force is newton and unit of distance is meter what is newton newton is kilogram meter second raised to power minus 2 and this is multiplied by meter so when we multiply what it will become it will become kilogram meter square second minus 2 so what it shows it shows that this kilogram meter square second minus 2 is equivalent to joules is it clear we drive these unit these quantities as the base units so if a question is the base unit for force so base unit of force is not newton the base unit for force is kilogram meter second minus 2 if it is a drive unit then it's newton same thing so this 
Pascal, this kilogram, meter minus one, second minus two is equivalent to Pascal. So if we say we express pressure in terms of base unit, so it is kilogram, meter minus one, second minus two. And work done, it is kilogram, meter square, second minus two. Then a quantity, a physical quantity, a measurable quantity. Can be a scalar or it can be a vector. A scalar quantity is having magnitude, unit, and direction, uh, no direction. Where vector quantity is having a magnitude, unit, and direction. So if it has having magnitude, unit, and direction, all three things are there, we call that as a vector quantity. If there's magnitude and unit, but no direction, we call it scalar. What's the meaning of a magnitude? Magnitude means number, value. Like if I say today's temperature is 30 degrees centigrade. So what this 30 is representing, this represents the magnitude. What this degree centigrade or Celsius representing is represent unit. But there is no direction is involved, so we call this quantity as a scalar quantity, which is not represented by direction. But if a quantity is represented by a direction, like if I say 30 Newton towards east, west, north, south. So 30, what 30 is representing, it is representing magnitude. What Newton is representing, a unit. And what east is representing a direction. So it has magnitude, unit, as well as direction. What we call this quantity, we call this quantity as a vector quantity. So vector quantities have all these three things, magnitude, unit, and direction. Some examples of scalar quantities, like time is a scalar, temperature is a scalar, and length is also a scalar. But about the vector quantity force, or weight, velocity, and acceleration. These all are vector quantities. They have magnitude, unit, and direction. Is it clear? So for a vector quantity, we can use a rule, we call that as a vector addition rule. Or we can also find a resultant of the vector by using this vector addition rule. So what we can do, for example, it depends on uh, if two vectors are acting in same direction. So what we will do to get the result, we will simply add them. So an object 
experiencing a force of 30 newton and 70 newton and i want a result of these two vectors because they are acting in the same direction so to get the result it will be 30 plus 70 which is equals to 100 newton and that is towards right hand side so it's 100 newton towards right that's the resultant of these two vectors if they are acting in opposite direction so to get the result if they are acting in opposite direction how i'll get the, or find the result i will subtract them so example two vectors are there a 70 is towards right and 30 is towards left and i i need a resultant so how i'll get the resultant of these two as they are acting in opposite direction so i will get resultant by subtraction so in this case it will be greater vector minus smaller vector i'll get the resultant which is 40 newton and the direction of this resultant is towards right hand side but if two vectors are making certain angle the vectors are making angle with each other and we want to find the resultant so to get the resultant what we will do we then we have options we can use and if this is only for two vectors like because we are finding a resultant of two vectors here so if two vectors making angle with each other to get the result we can use a parallelogram method both are in the scale diagram or we can consider there as a triangle method how we will do a parallelogram or a triangle method to get the resultant of these two vectors so basically both methods are same but in one case we consider them as a size sides of a parallelogram and another one we consider them as a size uh, sides of a triangle so in if you are finding uh, para, using a parallelogram method the rule is draw both vectors from same point and diagonal represent resultant of vector so example <clears throat> say we have an object which is experiencing force so we have an object which is experiencing force say 60 newton and 20 newton or 40 newtons with angle between them is 30 degrees and both these method the first step is we'll select a proper scale
because Newton, we don't have a scale in Newton here, so we don't know like 60 Newton stands for what length. So we should always select a proper scale. So example, first I select the 10 Newton is equals to one centimeter. So if 10 Newton is equals to one centimeter, so 40 Newton is equals to four centimeter and 60 Newtons is equals to six centimeter. This is what we select as our scale. You can select any number, it's up to you. Now, what we do, we should draw both vectors from the same point. So I mark a point and I'll draw both vector from same point like 60 Newton and 40 Newton, I should draw. So I will draw six centimeter and I will draw four centimeter from the same point. They should have a same starting point. Then I will complete a parallelogram. How I complete a parallelogram? I will open the compass, I can draw an arc open the compass six centimeter and draw an arc. So when I draw an arc, the diagonal of this parallelogram, what it represent, it represent the resultant. And then I can complete this figure as a parallelogram. So you can see this method, why it is called a parallelogram, because when you complete the figure, it will make a parallelogram. You will measure the length of this resultant according to the ruler, like using a ruler, you'll measure length. Example, if it was coming out, say eight centimeter, then you will get this eight centimeter. And direction, the term direction means the angle. So you can measure the angle from 60 Newton or you can measure the angle from 40 Newton, which is four centimeter. So magnitude, Magnitude is a value and the direction is the angle which it is making with one of the vector. Is it clear the parallelogram method? The parallelogram method to find the resultant Same way, you can also use a Yes, for the direction, you will measure the angle with one of the vectors and that is referred as direction. Same way, you can use a triangle method. What is a triangle method? In a triangle method, you will also select the proper scale, select a suitable scale. But this time, the two vectors should be a side of a triangle. So what you will do, you will draw the first vector. Then draw the second vector. from head of first vector and to get the resultant, what is the resultant? The resultant is from tail of the first to the head of the last vector. So if resultant is from tail of the first to the head of the last, that's resultant. This is a triangle method. I'm using a same example so you can understand how it can be done. Say two vectors are there. One is uh, 60 Newton, another one is 40 Newton, making angle 30 degrees with each other.
a force of 60 newton and a force of 40 newton first we select a suitable scale as we did earlier here you can see so because i'm taking the same value so i will select the same scale then you will draw the first vector so i will draw the first vector like example i drew 60 newton okay like this is the first vector which is uh, 60 newton equals to 6 cm then from the first vector from the head of the first vector, I will draw the second vector. So I should draw in the same manner, uh, like I drew, this is six Newton, which is uh, 60 Newton equal to six centimeter. Then from the first vector, I will draw the second vector. The angle between them is 30, not this angle. This angle will not be 30 because if I extend this, this angle will be 30 as you can see so i drew 40 newton now which is four centimeter now what is the resultant resultant is from tail of the first this is the first vector tail and the head of the last so when you join the tail of the first to the head of the last this is called resultant of the vector and you will get the same answer like if previously we were getting eight centimeter here also we will get 8 centimeter as a resultant which is equivalent to 80 newton is it clear the triangle method so in a triangle method we draw the first vector then from the from the head of the first vector we draw the second vector and joining from tail of the first to the head of the last this is a tail of the first and it is this one is the head of the last so when we join them, we call that as a resultant vector. Is it clear? The triangle method. Then resolving the vector. Into rectangular component. What, what's the meaning resolving a vector into rectangular component means breaking the vector into component. Like you have a force, which is 30 Newton. The idea of a rectangular component, first you should have an idea of a rectangular component. Look, what happened? If I draw arrow up, it means it is a vertical component. If I draw an arrow down or towards right or towards left, it is horizontal. Right or left is horizontal, up or down is vertical. So when we divide the force into its component like what part is acting on x-axis horizontally and what part is acting on y-axis vertically we call that as rectangular component so example if there's a force you attach a rope to an object and you are applying a force and your force is making 30 degrees here so it is making angle 30 degrees with horizontal and a force of 100 newton is there so actually, you're not, this force is not horizontal. This is not vertical. It has both component. It has some horizontal and it has some vertical. So how to find a horizontal component and how to find a vertical component? So we use a triangle, right angle triangle. So if I complete this, if I complete this triangle, this is a right angle triangle. So this part is known as a horizontal part and the other part is a vertical. 
So how I can find the horizontal part? As you can see, it's a right angle triangle. So this one is a base, perpendicular, hypotenuse. So I have the formula that sine theta is perpendicular over hypotenuse. So sine theta is there. Perpendicular, I don't know. The vertical component is a perpendicular. And what is hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is equals to 100. So it will be multiplied or instead of taking 100, example, I'm taking a number here. Uh, sorry, variable here, say F. So this will be, the hypotenuse will be equal to F. So F is divided, other side it will be multiplied. So what it shows, it shows the vertical component is equals to F sine theta. And what about horizontal component? Like we have cos theta is equals to base over hypotenuse. So cos theta, base, we don't know. And what about hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is F. F is multiplied there. So we can say the base this part, the base is equals to F cos theta. So whenever we are finding the horizontal component and we know the angle with X axis, if we need a horizontal component, that's equal to F cos theta. And if we know the word, we want to find the vertical component, we will use F sine theta. So if I say a force of 30 Newton, making angle 45 with x axis the what is a horizontal component and what is a vertical so how to find a horizontal component that's equal to f cos theta you can see horizontal is equal to f. so means force is 30 cos 45 and the vertical component is equal to f sine theta so f is 30 sine and 45 is it clear? This is called a resolution resolving a vector into its rectangular component. Like breaking the vector into horizontal and vertical components. Is it clear?